Hi, this is Dr. S. P. Arsa from Mechanical and Industrial Department, IIT Roorkee. In the course Vibration Control, we are mainly discussing about the control techniques and uh, we broadly categorize those under passive vibration and active vibration control. In this lecture series, we are mainly discussing about the principles of active vibration control. And in that, we discussed that for uh, controlling the vibration through these active vibration control features, we need to know the sensing part, we need to know the actuation corresponding and then you see here how the control unit which, which is being there to you know like uh, amplify the things or you know like some kind of uh, uh, external features are to be added to the actuation to balance that. And also you see here then we found that there are various uh, intelligent or the smart materials which can be even acted as you see you know like. Uh, the vibration control I means you know like the vibration control devices and they can you see induce they can sense and they can induce the uh, you know like uh, the kind of forces which is being required to suppress the vibration in terms of you see you know like uh, some repulsive part. So the first material which was discussed was the piezoelectric materials and we discussed that there are various forms right from you see the natural or the man made these piezoelectric materials are being available. There are li certain limitations in the naturally available the piezoelectric crystals. So that is why you see the man-made piezoelectric uh, you know, like uh, these features are being added to the materials, even right from the ceramics to the polymers. And generally, you see most common piezoelectric material which is being available, which is available and which is being used for the vibration control sensing is the PZT patches, even for actuations as well. In which you see here, we have the lead, we have the zirconium and we have the titanium feature. So all three together you see here, they have you know, like sufficient strength and also you see to, to sense and to actuate when you see you know like uh, some automatic control unit is being added in between that. And we discussed about you see that these you know like the piezoelectric uh, patches or the piezoelectric materials can be you know like acted right from measuring the displacement to the acceleration and piezoelectric accel the accelerometer. They are excellent you see you know like uh, uh, we can say in measuring the vibration right from you know like uh, low frequency to high frequency vibration and they are also you know like sensitive from uh, the sensitivity is also very high. So in, in other means you see here when we are just talking about the measuring features the vibration and then you means the sensing feature rather I should say and then the actuations the piezoelectric material is the best one. But sometimes you see here when you know, like uh, we need to just go for uh, you know like the different kind of applications there are various other materials which are truly available and we can use those materials as well. The first part in this is the electroreological fluid the ER fluids and you see the next is the magnetoreological fluid then even we have you see you know like uh, some kind of electro and magneto restrictive uh, structures means you see here like by applying the fields how we can you know like as, uh, this make a symmetric part in the particles when they are being subjected by these electrical or magnetic fields. So uh, these are the specific materials under the electro or we can say the magnetic uh, fields are there. And then we are going to discuss about the safe memory alloys. So in this category the first part is coming as we already discussed uh, uh, the first, word, uh, first, first part was there on the piezoelectric materials right from the characterization to the application part and even you see here when we are trying to design those things what are the key steps which we discussed already right from you see the principles to the application part. So in this category now we are going to discuss about the electroreological fluids and these are the fluids which can exhibit fast and reversible change in their, rheolo in, in their rheological properties under the influence of external electrical fields. So that's why that's why you see here like the molecular properties, the fluid properties, the you know like uh, and these uh, rheological part, they have a straight influence. You see here when there is a change in the electrical outside electrical field, and you know like uh, uh, ER fluids are a class of the smart material which can exhibit a significant reversible change in their rheological and hence the mechanical property under the influence of this uh, you know like uh, applied electrical fields can be immediately changed correspondingly. So we need to see that how these properties, the rheological property of the fluid is really so sensitive 
straight way right from whenever the external uh, you know like uh, these uh, electrical field are being applied and when there is a change in their virological uh, properties then how the mechanical properties are being changing under the influence of this applied electrical field. So, you see here in this particular part the embedded ER fluids are always being there in the various structural elements to mitigate the vibration problem. So, once we know that you see they are you know like uh, quite sensitive in that part then we can embed these things we can simply inject these ER fluids in the various structural element just to mitigate this vibration problem. And these ER fluids commonly composed of a polar polarized solid particles which dispersed in a non conductive oil. Because if it is a conductive oil then certainly you see there is a uh, various other effects are there which can even you know like imposed on uh, these uh, uh, this polarized solid particles. So, upon the imposition of this external electrical field these polarized solid particles are simply the, these particles are simply you know like uh, uh, being formed a polarized way and then they are forming a chain like chain like structure along the direction of the applied field. So, first part is coming when the electrical field are being applied to these solid particles along the layer then they are simply first polarized and the, rend uh, the random orientation of these can be again uh, make a chain line a chain like a structure when the field is being applied and this chain like structure is just showing in one direction of the electrical field. So, the change in apparent viscosity in this is absolutely depending on that what is the strength of the electric applied field that is the that means the potential ap uh, potential which is divided by the distance is you know like just uh, existing between the plates that how much distance is there between the plate accordingly you see the potential features are being applied to there and then ac accordingly there is a change in the viscosity of the fluid. And the change is not the simple change like you know like in the viscosity these fluids are now known as the ER fluids rather than we can say that it is a electro viscous fluid it is not electro viscous fluid because the change is not exactly just like the viscosity is changing as we are just in like putting some kind of external efforts. The changes are absolutely a chain like structure all along the fibers. So, the, the effect is better described as an electric field dependent shear. So, when there is an activation of an elasto uh, this uh, electro rheological fluid uh, be electro rheological fluid then they are behaving not like the Newtonian part it they are just behaving as the Bingham plastic in which there is elastic feature, but again you see here there is some kind of the resistance or the viscous feature is there in that. So, sometimes we can say that these uh, ER when they are being activated and when we are just trying to use that they are showing the stress strain relationship or you see whatever you know like uh, uh, these uh, resistance or the deformation against the force uh, relationship according to the Bingham plastic or we can say sometimes it is a viscoelastic material with a yield point which is determined by the electric field strength. So, you see whatever the electric fields are there accordingly you see here the proportionate elastic features are being coming and there is a resistance which is being there due to the viscosity present in that. So, they are not a simple electro viscous fluid they are basically a Bingham plastic model based on that. So, after getting the yield point the fluid shears as if the entire fluid which is just shears as a normal fluid. So, this ER fluid up to you know like reaching up to the yield point the things are somewhat different, but once it is reaches there then it is a shearing part and then you see they are simply showing the ER fluid just like a shearing part of the fluid. That means you see here the incremental shear stress is absolutely proportional to the rate of shear. So, we know that when we are talking about the Newtonian fluid as we know that it is a straight part means the stress and stress uh, the stress and strain is directly proportional. So, in this case you see here we have even not reaching up to the yield point the uh, direct proportional fe features are there, but here we have first the 
there is no we can say the strain up to certain amount of force because of the viscous part they are absorbing and then they are showing a linear a feature between the stress and the rate of strain. Hence, the resistance to motion of the fluid can be controlled by adjusting the applied electric field. So, we can say that the ER the ERF dampers which is simply based on you know, like the electrological fluid ERF. The ERF damper or electrorheological uh, part the concept you see here is a type of quick response active nonlinear damper because certainly you see here they are not showing any uh, this Newtonian part. So, nonlinear damper used in high sensitivity vibration control because we know that first of all as we just want to increase the resistance just we can only you know like increase the uh, this electric field outside and they are clearly exhibiting the yield point and beyond yield point whatever the shearing features are there with the molecules under these polarized feature they are simply proportional to the rate of shear strain. So, if we want to enhance the actuations and sensing capabilities of the smart material then they have to lead to the effective means of handling unwanted vibration in automobile and aerospace industries. So, certainly you see here these materials in which there is a clear relations between the molecular orientation and the electric field can be acted under the high sensitive vibration measurement and then they can be act as the sensing and the corresponding actuation part and that can be straight away used as you see in automobile or aerospace industries. But again you see here one of the key feature is the strength of the applied electric field. So, when we are varied the physical phenomena such as the piezoelectric effect or we can say the magneto restrictions or we can say even the electro restrictions underpin the material or the functioning of these materials are absolutely unlike uh, we can say changing with that. The, co the complexity of these phenomena leads the, that you see we need to characterize their behavior, their, their behavior in terms of the specific parameter of the relevance according to the application where it is to be required just for vibration control or sensing feature or you see here what exactly you know like the kind of uh, damping part which is to be required there itself or how much resistance is to be applied there. So, when we are talking about the vibration control application one of the most uh, most uh, we can say one is the mostly concerned with the inertial and viscoelastic properties can be quantified in terms of the mass stiffness damping as we have already checked. And if we are just talking about the physics of this electrorheological fluid then we, we can see that they have the corresponding features through which we can control the vibration through these you know like uh, the strength of the electric field and the polarization effect for absorbing and for get, get, giving the uh, resistance towards that. So, we can say an electro an electroactive material is nothing but is a suspension where a semiconductive material like we can say either the, the semiconductive is in a particulate or we can say the liquid form is dispersed in a dielectric liquid medium. And the rheological property change in the reversible form by several orders of the magnitude under this external electric field. Like you see the, uh, the rheological property can easily be controlled within the wide range and then you see we can straightway develop for various application. And the potential application when we are talking about is the clutch, the brake, damping system, actuators, fuel, fuel injection system. So, these are you see here uh, the one part which is coming under the IC engine category. Even they can be you know like straightway put in the joints and hands of robotic arm for smoother control at the high sensitivity, high sensitivity level. The photonic crystals, the micro switches even for mechanical and ele electronic interfacing parts where you see both the things are being you know like interfacing together there we can use this ER fluids and they have they are showing good exhibition even in the recent time. They can also be used when you see the train is just moving and uh, there is a chance of the crushing when there is an impact there if you want to reduce the damage to the subsequent coaches <coughs> then you see these ER fluid dampers can absorb the huge amount of energy and they can restrict 
whatever you see the impact energy which is being transmitted to the other four chairs. So, still the research is going on on that, but there is a great application of these and we can straight way put for you know like uh, just to uh, safeguard for other coaches in that. So, the interaction between the nanoparticles and the electric field which is being mainly explored in that and we can also use the variational formulation for both the kind of characteristics under the ER fluid part like the static and the dynamic characteristics. So, ER fluids are nothing but the suspension of the extremely fine non-conductive particles. So, if you are talking about the particle size, then they are only up to the 50 microns diameter. And when we are saying that when these particles are suspended in these you know like uh, these fine particles basically, the non-conductive particles we can say rather in, a, in, in an electrically insulated field, we can get a well streamlined ER fluid properties. So, ER fluids commonly we can say the composed of the polarized solid particles as we discussed and they are being dispersed into a non-conductive oil for a domain part. And upon the imposition of this, you can see that we have these particles which are being uh, uh, randomly oriented there and they have you see since they the, these are the non-conductive particles and since you see here they are being now polarized by applying these things by applying the electric field. Now, when the ER field is being acted means when uh, the electric field is being acted then all the rheological feature of this material means the fluid part they can be well streamlined and they can exhibit you see a clear properties which we require because now they are aligned in that in that same direction where the electric field is being applied there. So, when we are talking about the mechanical feature then the yield strength of this typically ER fluid which are in the order of 10 to 5 kilo Pascal under static and dynamic load loading conditions. And even for both AC and DC electric fields of the order of few kilowatt, kilovolts KVs. So, when we are just applying these you see you know like the electric field in KVs, we can at least get the yield strength in this part. And moreover the change in apparent viscosity as we discussed. It, it, it is having a reversible effect in the presence or absence of this electric field. So, when we are considering a dispersion of the particle in fluid medium in which the particles are nano sized, nano sized or otherwise we can be straight way formalize those particles under the under the effect of this electric electric field. So, when we are talking about the classification of this electrorheological fluid, then we have the two broad categories in this, one the liquid phase and one is the dispersed phase. So, when we are talking uh, when you know like we are categorizing this electrorheological fluid in the liquid phase first, then the first thing is coming what is the additive part in this, whether we are talking about the water or whether we are talking about the anhydrous. So, accordingly you see the liquid phase is to be you know like uh, implemented and then we can get those rheological properties in that. But when we are talking about mainly the dispersed phase, then the two part is coming one is the liquid in which the homogeneous fluids are there, which we are always uh, putting together in the homogeneous features in that. And when we are talking about solid, then also we, we are we are trying to keep the homogeneous fluid within that. And under the liquid homogeneous fluid, we can say the two main parts are there, one is the liquid crystallization that what is the liquid crystalline features are there in the electrolyological fluid or second is there what is the emulation. Because this is also you know like some kind of you see the liquid part which is to be provided under the dispersed phase. And then you see when we are talking about the emulation that means you see what is the micro emulations are there means you see how uh, these micron size of means that is only up to 5, 50 micron size you see these emulations features are there. But when we are talking about the dispersed phase in the solid part even in the uh, under the homogeneous fluid then we can say there are two main categories the inorganic and organic. When we are talking about the organic then we have a clear cut the polymer feature and when we are talking about the inorganic then we have the oxide and non oxide part. 
So, this is you see you know like the broader uh, we can say classification of the ER fluids when we are starting from the dispersed and the liquid phase and we are when we are ending up to whether the water or we can say the micro emulsion or oxide don oxide or the polymetric features of the organic dispersed solid homogeneous fluid. So, when an electric field now because we know that this is the two broader features are there one what exactly the solid particle which are being polarized and what is the strength of the electric field through which we can define the resistance provided by this. So, when in electric field E say you know like the E generally we are using is applied to such colloidal dispersion of the materials or, or the particles, the particles will be polarized electrically straight away. And we can say that the epsilon s which we are always using the complex dielectric constants for this because right now now we have the polarized particles electrically polarized particle. So, these solid particles they have the complex dielectric constant that is the epsilon s and also we can say that we have the spherically shaped particles in which we can say whatever the liquid part is there for this the complex dielectric constant is epsilon l. So, now you see we are categorizing two part epsilon s for solid particles epsilon l for liquid particles and you see here we can simply characterize their dielectric constants under this. So, when we have you see you know like the spherical solid shaped particle we can say that the dipole moment which is to be induced under the action of uh, this electrical field which is applied there we have the dipole moment p is equals to epsilon s minus epsilon l means the difference of the dielectric constants under the influence of this electrical field in we can say like the solid to liquid divided by epsilon s plus 2 times of epsilon e into a cube e or else even we can simply put the constant epsilon s minus epsilon l divided by epsilon s plus 2 epsilon l that is absolutely a constant term because it is a specific property of or inherent property of the fluid part which is to be there inside the entire system. And where you see now when we are just keeping the beta which is the constant one you see just showing that into A cube E where E is the applied electrical field and A is the radius of particle. And one of the important part here the electric field is the only specific field which is being applied at the location of the particle means it is a very specific reason there itself. So, whatever the induced dipole interaction means dipole dipole interactions are there between the particle means then the random dispersion is not the lowest energy state of the system. The particles would tend to aggregate and form the chains or the columns according to the applied field directions. So, these random dispersion now is being really characterized according to the dipole dipole interactions and then you see here these whatever the streamline features are there in the you know like these particles is being decided by this applied field direction. And the formation of chains or these columns whether it is in the chains or the columns is the reason why such you know like the collide this uh, the uh, collide uh, exhibit an increased viscosity that means you see whatever the formation of these chains or the columns are there they are mainly due to the viscosity is increased or even we can say this is something the solid like behavior when sheared in the direction perpendicular to the electric field. So, you see here when an electric field is applied the two things are being happening when these the collide features are there the viscosity is being emerged out and accordingly you see here they are simply showing a streamline character or one we can say the line character or in other way also that can be understand by that they are simply showing a solid kind you know like these fluid particles the solid kind behavior when the shearing action is being happened because the normal direction is perpendicular in the under the action of the electric field. 
So, they are absolutely you know, like sharing action with these two parts and such rheological variation which we are saying like electrological effect can be straight way featured out under the action of these electric field and the polarized particle. And the collides which is one of the important part here which exhibit the significant ER effect can be we can say that like uh, just uh, uh, considered under the electrological fluidic features that how much you see this colliding features are there and after that you see how they are just streamlined in the in the like uh, the column or the chains part. So, when we are saying that there is a formation of the chains or the columns which is being governed by the competition between the electric energy and the entropy of the particle. This is one of the important feature here that the electric energy is being there because of you see we are polarizing and applying the electric fields and what the entropy, the disorderness is there, the randomness is there in that. We can simply manifest in the dimensional less parameter gamma in such a way that the P into E where we have already discussed about the you know like uh, uh, this uh, dipole moment into the applied electric field divided by K B into T where K B is the Boltzmann constant and T is the applied whatever the room temperatures are there. So, we can say that when we are just discussing all that part that you see what exactly the collation under the collation what exactly the relations are there between or what the you know like the exchanging features are there between the electric energy and the entropy of these particles. Because ultimately when we you know like uh, putting the electric field we know that after certain time they are always being along the chain or the columns. So, whatever the entropy or the disordinance is there in the system it is being reducing. So, we can simply get this you know like uh, with this uh, the non dimensional parameter gamma which is nothing but equals to P into E divided by K B into T as we discussed and for the room temperature and for any given P we can say that it can be straight away find out that what the Boltzmann constants are in between uh, are there in between that and even when we are saying that the gamma equals to 1 that means it just says that what exactly the boundaries are there between the entropy and the dominated region and then how the ER region can be formulate, uh, formulated in that manner, which can show the linearity means the minimum. We can say you know like the uh, disorderness or the laminar features and the resulting relation between the electric field and the size of particles, which is you see you know, like the beta into A cube as we discussed in that uh, beta into A cube uh, to the power 1 by cube, which clearly shows that that we have a clear uh, like the variation as you can see here as this uh, particle size which is being you know, like increasing right from 1 to 1000 part. Then we can see that when we have the particle size very high certainly the disorderness will be more and at that time the entropy effect is dominating. And when even you see here when we are trying to you know like increase the electric field and if we have you see here you know like uh, the uh, more means I mean to say actually the particle size is quite significant even more then also you see here the electro uh, the electrological reason is dominating. So, this is a very clear relation between the particle size applied voltage and then you see here which region is being dominated. Again when you have even the higher electric voltage which is being applied there and the particle size is even low in that, in that case also the entropy effect will be dominated. You can see that this at this region even we have very small particle size and we are just increasing this electric voltage in this entire region the entropy effect is dominating while even if we are just increasing that part and if we are at the certainly at the lower voltage the most of the uh, significant feature is the ER part and as it is just increasing you see, as we are increasing the voltage the ER effect is dominating with E1 the 100 particle size. 
So, this typical response times of ER fluid are in the order of the few milliseconds. They are simply you know, like just showing this and uh, this uh, decay part. And the empyrean viscosity of these fluid changes reversibly by an order of you see the 1 lakh in response to the electric field. So, if you are just taking one example say a typical ER fluid can go up to the consistency of liquid to that of the gel and back you see in the same manner with the response times of uh, on the order of the milliseconds. So, this is a clear feature that is why you see we are saying that this ER fluid dampers or the sensors they are very sensitive. So, ER fluids are the fluids with controllable rheological properties they can exhibit an excellent features. And when an electric field is applied to these fluids, they respond by forming a chain like structure with result in enhancement of the apparent viscosity by as high as 5 orders of the magnitude. And this results in the significant increase in the yield strength of the material. So, now if you are talking about the composition ER fluid, then we know that these are the type of smart fluid and they can be made by mixing a corn flour into a light vegetable oil or we can say a silicon oil rather, which is more convenient. And there are two main theories through which we can explain the effect. One, the interfacial tension in between you see say the corn flour part and you see the silicon oil or we can say means in the interfacial tension or the water bridge theory and second is the electrostatic theory. So, these uh, two theories you know like we can say that how the particles are being formed with the you know like uh, the mixing of the non-conducting oil like we can say vegetable light vegetable oil or the silicon oil and then the other part is like the corn flour or any kind of this feature. So, when the water based theory is being uh, considered then it assume uh, it assume uh, assumes that a three phase system in which the particle contained the third phase which is another liquid say you see the water immersible this just you know like this immersible with the main phase of liquid means the oil. And with no applied electric field the third phase is strongly attracted to and held within the particles. This means that the ER fluid is a suspension of the particle which behaves as the liquid part. So, this is you see the water bridge theory which can be straightway acted between you see here whatever the, the particle flow the means you know like whatever the subject particles and the liquid phase is there. So, the subject phase is we can say you know like just like the water and something and the main phase is, is known as the, the liquid part it means we can say that the oil part or any kind of you see the main domain in which the things are being merged. So, you see here you know like uh, we can say that whenever you see the ER fluid parts are there this is nothing but the suspension of the particles in which they can behave as the liquid. And when the electric field is applied on this third phase which is driven to one side of the particle by the electro osmis feature and then they bind in the adjacent particle together to form a chain. And this chain structure is simply showing that the ER fluid is exhibiting a solid nature. So, this is a clear feature before applying the electric field we have a liquid phase means the liquid structure behavior and after applying the electric field we have a solid kind of behavior from the same ER fluid. And the second theory the electrostatic theory is simply assumes just a two phase system with the dielectric particles forming a chain which is aligned with the applied electric field in an analogous way to how the magneto this MR fluid is working. So, we are also going to you know like discuss about that. So, we can say that the ER fluid has been constructed with the solid phase made from the conductor coated in an insulator part. And you see the giant electro this uh, electrological fluid the GER it was being discovered in 2000 you know like 3 we can say in somewhere in like uh, in which in, in, in you know like we can say uh, the UK part and they, they, they are simply showing that they are able to sustain the higher yield strength than the normal ER fluid because they are consisting 
a urea coated nanoparticles of the barium titanium oxide which is suspended in the silicon oil, the non-conductive oil. So now the things are somewhat changed. They are simply used a specific feature the nanoparticle in which you see here they are simply like put in the barium uh, this we can say titanium oxide and that, that then they can be suspended in the silicon oil. And by adopting this when the yield strength is increasing the high yield strength is mainly due to the high dielectric constant of the particle and the small size of particles and whatever the urea coating is there. So these are the three main features in which we are just saying that when this nanoparticle which is being coated by the urea and you know like uh, of this uh, we can say a barium uh, titanium oxalate they can simply exhibit a uh, high dielectric constants and since because of the small size they can show a great yield strength which, which can be we can say a form for various applications. And one of the another advantage of this uh, GER, the GER as the, you know that the gained electrological part is that the relationship between the electric field strength and the yield strength is linear after the electric field is uh, reaches up to 1 kilowatt per millimeter. So you see here we can clearly exhibit the linearity feature between these electric field and the yield strength up to a certain limit beyond that part and the GR is a high, high yield strength but low electric field strength and low current density fluid compared to the common ER fluid. So the major concern is the use of this oxalic acid for preparation of the particle as we know that they are the strong organic acids. The normal application of this ER fluid is in the fast acting hydraulic walls and the clutches with the separation between the plates in order to you know like we can say 1 millimeter we can apply the electric field almost up to 1 kilowatt and we can straight away apply in these kind of you know like uh, the actuation or the sensing part under the hydraulic walls or clutches. So in simple terms we can say that when the electric field is being applied this ER hydraulic valve is shut or we can say the plates of the ER clutches are being locked together. And when the electric field is removed, this ER, this electrological hydraulic valve is open or we can say the clutch, the clutch plate which is being made by this ER fluid is disengaged. So this is you see the simple, you know like we can say the relation when the, this electric field is being applied or the absence of this. The other common application are ER brakes. We can see, we can think that you see that the brake or a clutch even you know like can be fixed on one side and the shock absorber also which can be even thought of the closed hydraulic system where the shock is used to try and we can say the pump fluid through the wall. So you see here that the shocking features can be straight away absorbed and even you know like dissipate the features. So ER fluid, ER fluid can be not only acted as the straight way controlling the motion through walls or brakes or something but also you see here they can be acted as the damper part in which you see the absorption the shock absorption can be happened. And they also you know like uh, being proposed to have the potential application in the flexible electronics in which the fluid is incorporated in the element such as we can say the rollable screen or the keypad and where the viscosity changing the quantities of the fluid and which you see allowing the rollable element to become a rigid for use and also flexible to roll through which the you know like uh, the retract for the storing when it is not being used. So it is just you see a kind of when it is being used it can be simply you know like uh, allowing the viscosity changing properties for such kind of you see you know like the action and when the things are being not you know like there then it can be you know like uh, retract for storing when they are just free not in use. So now we can see that there are three modes accordingly you see the mechanisms are there under this. When we are talking about the shear mode which we are all talking about we know that the various release mechanism is there under that one is the clutch device in which the ER fluid mechanical 
couples two surfaces by increasing or decreasing its viscosity with the application or the removal of electric field as we discussed when we apply the electric field these er fluid clutches are being engaged but this is the absolute a shearing mode in you know like in the particle when the electric field is being applied and when we you know like just remove the electric field the shearing effect is just released and there is a disc a disengagement between these clutch plates even the damping device which we discussed the shock absorber the er fluid usually operates in either the shear or we can say the extens the extensional configurations and this shear configuration is used when the fluid undergoes the strain an extensional configuration is used when the compressive stresses are there and they can immediately you see dissipate the energy and at the same time they can absorb the energy because they have you see the potential in between the uh, this uh, uh, ionized particles the variable flow controls in this adjusting the viscosity of fluid according to the applied you know, we can say electric uh, field as it flows through the porous elect electrode sap, uh, as it just flows through this porous electrode uh, separating two chambers can effectively control the volume of flow and by this we can rather use that this is some of the controlling feature or the devices where we just need an accurate flow the discharge part from these channels so this is you see something you see whether we are talking about any kind of flow they can be act as the clutches or we can we can say that they can be act as the storing device they can be also act you see here as you know like the controlling feature when the flow uh, flow uh, part is being controlled or even you see we can say that when we are just talking about this the brake system the er brakes are also one of the effective feature through that so as we discussed you see you know like uh, the er walls which can be we can say that you know like it's a kind of uh, the modular form in which the hydraulic power inputs are there that means you see you know like we have the inlet pressure and the flow rate which is to be applied there and then we can get the correspondingly like control which is simply we can say according to what the fluid resistances are there to flow through the these mechanism so you can see that the model of er flow control wall which simply aligns conveniently with the pressure drop we can simply you know like uh, make a characteristic between that what the pressure drops and the corresponding flow rate characteristics are there so as as you know like uh, these uh, uh, characteristics is been exhibited in one of the paper stanway in 1996 we can see that we have the port 1 where the hydraulic power inputs are there at port 2 we have the hydraulic power output and at port 3 we have the applied electric field so entire electric field control wall mechanism can be straight to work together under the uh, under these three ports and when you know like uh, these things are happen we can say that the hydraulic power input which is you know like being applied at the port 1 the corresponding power output which is nothing but the product of outlet pressure and the flow rate can be taken at port 2 and whatever the control which is being required in the form of applied electric field which in like influence the fluid resistance can be straight way acted under the control unit so this is you see a scheme in which we can say that the entire entire control feature are being there according to the required we can say electric field even we can say that the er wall which can control the vibration damper we can control the vibration according to the damper feature so typical flow control er vibration damper can be straight way connected to the hydraulic piston by the sort we can say connecting pipe whose influence on the performance can be we can say that you know it's not so significant and the force or velocity characteristic of the piston when they are just moving under steady flow conditions we can simply you know like featured out and the calculation we can say under the you know like the steady motion of piston and these we can say you know like uh, the piston velocity and the area can be imme immediately formulated out and can be framed easy way so this is what you see the piston feature you see where you see the er walls are there this is what my er electrological fluid and the pistons are being moving towards that and whatever the connecting pipe through which you see you know like the er uh, which is connecting the er wall and this is simply showing that you see how the passes are being forming and then how we can control the entire device means using the vibration damper and how they can be act towards the damping or we can say uh, the viscoelastic feature where the things are being required and when we just want to show the relations 
between the pressure drop and the in like uh, the flow versus applied electric field in the ER flow control valve, we can see that when the flow rate is being high, the pressure drop is also being increasing and then the, you know like uh, the electric field is also being increased there itself. So when we have a zero, ap this applied field, we know that this, this just shows the linear relationship between the pressure drop and the volume flow rate under that. And when you see we are changing, there is a clear nonlinear variation in between these part, even when we increase the uh, electric field applications. And when we just want to see the multi-annular, this uh, flow control wall, you can see that these are all you see the, the annular part and then the flows are being there from that and this pressure drop which is being there in between that part, we can simply gather and we can find by increasing the electric field through this core, we can see that how the variations are there between the pressure drop and the volume rate. So we, we know that the annular gap is always in between 1 millimeter to 0 0.5 and it is always being constant ac according to that. So for a given discharge, we can simply find what the, you know, like the corresponding pressure drops are there and it is according to the length, the breadth or the electric separation of electric wall. First it is depending this, second it is depending on what is the Newtonian viscosity and the density of the ER fluid. And third which is very important, the strength of the applied electric field. So you see here the vibration damping can be get using this direct shear mode, when the, you know, like the shearing features are there, it can straightway increase the solid form of that and then the solid form of between the particle as they are being ch channeled out and then they can be simply framed this shearing part of the fluid between the translating and the rotating electrodes. Or if you want to find out if the electrodes are being rotating, then we can say that we have a torsional damper and if the electrode are just translating, we can say that we have the linear damper and we can simply you know, like, uh, exhibit the relation as we know that the yield behavior of these uh, ER fluids are the Bingham plastic, so we can say the tau ER means the plastic, uh, this uh, the shear stress uh, of the ER fluids is nothing but the minimum shear stress which is being there plus neta into gamma where the plasticity and the shear rate is being formed together. So we can say that this is what you see the shearing uh, modes are there when the electrode uh, motions are there according to the applied force and the in between the uh, this stationary electrode and the moving electrode, the ER fluid are being just sheared out. Or even we can see in this other part that you see here when we have these electrodes in between you see through which we are applying the electric field and in this particular part where you see we have the entire uh, these you know like uh, these uh, fluid particles they are being just shearing in this way. So the last part in this is the ER machine mount in which you see here we can say that the, electro, uh, the electrological machinery mount is based upon just the con, uh, this uh, hydraulic isolator. So first it is just uh, providing the necessary static load capacity to support the machine and second it is also acting on the upper chamber for hydraulic fluid and it just serves to uh, you know, like pump for fluid through the orifice plate at, into the lowest chamber. So this is what it is there, the ER fluids are there in between this and you see on, on top of that we can say that you know, like uh, we have the rubber uh, feature which is being mounted there and in the upper field also these uh, ER uh, fluids are being there. So whatever the direction of loads are there, they can provide a better this machine mounting. So you see here we can say that the for uh, this ER fluid, they, the primary control mechanism in this for varying the isolation properties of this device in the main form of the size and shape of the ori orifice through which you see here, we can control the entire motion of the machine mounting feature on that. And this is a great application when we are just going with this. Lastly, if we are talking the major problem in the ER fluid are the suspension. Hence, you know like uh, in time they, they, they tend to settle down. So the advanced fluid, uh, this ER fluid tackles this problem by means that as you know like they are matching the densities of the solid and liquid components or by using the nanoparticles which brings ER fluid into line with the development of magnetorheological fluids. And another problem in this is the breaking, the uh, breakdown voltage of the air as 3 kilowatt per millimeter, which is near the electric field needed for ER device to operate. So you see here we need to modify this characteristic, otherwise you see you know like we are always having the breakdown voltage uh, in these features. 
but there are advantages of electric field as they can control considerably more mechanical power than the electric power when they are using as the control, controlling effect you see here, means we can say when they are acting as the power amplifier. And also you see here, the speed of the response when the few other effects are being able to control the large amount of mechanical or hydraulic power can be rapidly uh, you know like applied to these things and we can have a, 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 the, the response in a very speedy manner. So, this is you see you know like we can say uh, when we are just increasing the electric field the apparent viscosity is also experienced by the most uh, ER fluids which are being used in the shear or any other flow modes and that is part is very limited in this. Because the ER fluid changes from Newtonian liquid to partly we can say that you know, like uh, the crystalline feature the shimmy Hurst slushes. So, we need to check it out that when an almost liquid to solid phase changes which can be obtained when the uh, which can be obtained when a electrological fluid additionally experiences and uh, compressive stresses. So, we can use this effect just to provide the e electrological burial displays or we can say very effective clutches where the things are being you know like uh, used based on the ER fluids. So, this is a brief description about the ER fluids still you see the huge research is going on about the main characterization and whatever the drawbacks are there in that can be straightway reformed there. So, in the next lecture now we are going to discuss about the basic feature of the magneto rheological fluid, what is the basic mechanism and how we can adopt this as the vibration control device there. Thank you.